The final part of the neurological exam is assessing for pain. We're going to go ahead and keep that for the end so the dog stays friendly with us. First sensation we can, we can look for is cervical pain. I can do this with a cookie, simply by letting the dog turn its own head, or bring it up, or bring it down. Bring it, Rosie, right here. Or I can do it by pivoting the head around my hands. Placement of the, head right be, the hand right behind the head, and I'll simply go ahead and twist the head around my hand. Same thing on the lower neck. That will isolate upper, lower cervical pain. Yeah, or is it you deserve it? As we want to assess back pain, we are best doing so as the dog is laying down so we don't put pressure on the limbs. Rosie has hip dysplasia and other joint problems, so we don't want to put pressure on those joints. Alternatively, you want to make sure you support the dog while you're assessing back pain if the dog is standing, and I will show you this in a minute. On her belly, as she's laying down, I can safely go ahead and apply pressure. As she's standing, it's crazy. What I'm going to do is make sure I support her so I don't put weight and strain on her joints and simply isolate each vertebrae and follow through with my hand on the bottom aspect and look for pain, which Rosie doesn't have. Last thing, if you're considering polyquina syndrome to be present in your patient, Grab the tail and simply bring the tail up. This should hurt in any dog that has a disc problem in the LS area. For Rosie, she's doing fine. This concludes our neurological examination. And if you have any problems with brain disease, just remember the mentation will usually be affected. You can see dysmetria, hypermetria, balance problems, or abnormal signs in the eyes. If you have problems with spinal cord disease, you expect you have a tetra, or four limbs, or para, one limb, paresis. You will find that dogs that have spinal cord problems usually will progress in such that they have usually a paresis and are ambulatory, a paresis a non-ambulatory, then lose ability to move their limbs and fall into the plegia category, eventually lose superficial pain and lose deep pain. When deep pain is lost, you have no time to waste. The dog needs to be sent to a referral doctor. The key signs to referring a dog with back injury are ability to walk. If the patient cannot walk or worsens under medical care, you need to send. For dogs that have neuromuscular conditions, you are looking for key signs of exercise intolerance, decreased reflexes with a normal mentation, usually no ataxia, simply weakness. If you have any further questions about the neurological exam or any of the other of your cases, please feel free to call us at 941-929-1818. Thank you.